Hello, I'm Helen Bradley and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at the new End Screens tool for YouTube videos. In this video, we're going to look at a few things related to end screens on YouTube videos. We're going to look at how you can add it to a video that you're just uploading, how you can add it to existing videos, and some problems that sort of won't be fixed by this new end screen feature. I'm going to give you a link to this support article, but basically what it's telling you is that you can add end screens to YouTube videos now over the last five to 20 seconds of the video. That's your choice, but they can't be any longer than 20 seconds. The reason why you will want to be using end screens is that they can be viewed on mobile devices, whereas annotations cannot. So if you've been fudging end screens like I've been doing using annotations, forget about doing it that way. You'll want to be moving towards using end screens. I'm going to give you this link so you can read about them. Now this is a new video. This went up a few days ago, well after YouTube launched this new end screen feature. And this is what it looks like. I get a border around my video in the area in which I can put end screen data. And I've got a playlist and another video in this sequence and I've got a subscribe link. So this video has already been set up with end screens and they're over the last 20 seconds of the video. So this is what we're aiming towards. But the first thing that you'll need to do when you create end screens is actually to put something in your video that you can put the end screens over. So this is what I'm using. I have a document open here in Photoshop that I have created for my end screens. You'll notice that there's very little information in here. There's certainly no boxes for those end screen links. They are going to come from the end screen tool. My face is also not on this document because my face is going to come in with my subscribe link. So I'm just going to show you what I used to have. Okay, so this is my used to have one and I had my picture in it and I had all these little boxes. Well, these little boxes now are way too small. The subscribe link doesn't look like that and my face is going to be part of the subscribe link. So I don't want my face on the video twice. So you're going to have to redesign any graphics that you're using over the end of your video so that the end screens are going to work with them. And this is what I redesigned mine to be. So I save this out as a JPEG file at the file size that I'm recording my video at. So I'm recording at 1920 by 1080. So this image is 1920 by 1080 and it's a JPEG image. So let's have a look at what happens inside my editing software. So here is my editing software for the video that we just looked at inside YouTube. So at the very end of my video, when I start saying thank you for watching this video, please subscribe, etc., etc., I have just dropped in this image and I'm making sure that it runs for at least 20 seconds. Now mine runs a little bit longer than 20 seconds, which means it's going to show up a blank and then the last 20 seconds I can put end screen information over it. So that's what I'm doing with my videos that obviously we're just going to run through the whole video process and at the very end as I'm saying thank you and goodbye essentially there goes my image and just make sure that it's time for at least 20 seconds and I do that before I render my videos. Then I upload them to YouTube. So here is one of those videos up on YouTube. It's one that I've just uploaded. It's not ready to be released yet. We're just working on it but it does have that end screen image in place. So as I'm working on it, I'm going to end screen and annotations. And now I'm going to pull across until we get to the end of the video. So I'm looking at the last 20 seconds of the video. So the video runs for two minutes and 48 seconds. It's a very short video. So I'm going back to this marker here because this is set to 228. So YouTube's going to tell you where you can start putting this information in. And I want mine to run for the whole of the rest of the video. So I'm going to click on add element and I want to add in a playlist. So I'm going to click create. So I can select a recent upload best for viewer which allows YouTube to select the video from my channel to best suit the viewer, or I can choose a video or playlist. So I'm going to choose a video or playlist. I'm going to my playlist and I have a playlist for Illustrator users. Now this is an Illustrator video, this particular one. So I'm going for my Learn Illustrator playlist. So I'm just going to click to create the element. 
and it can be placed anywhere in this blue marked area and of course I want it to look pretty nice so I'm going to move it over the background area that I've already designed for this particular element or for these elements. I'm going to add a second element. Now one of these elements has to be a video, you'll read that in the YouTube information but I'm tending to use a playlist and a video so I'm going to click create again. In this case I could select best for viewer which will be a video from my channel or I could go and choose a specific video if I wanted to. I'm going to select a specific video and I can now go through uploaded videos to see if one of these is the one that I want to use. Now I have one that's an illustrator tracer design that's sort of about the same topic so I'm actually going to select that one and click create element. And I'm obviously going to move it into a different position. Now we're getting little alignment options here so you can make sure that these are sort of sized appropriately and aligned really neatly. Now I'm going to add my subscribe link so here I can just click on create opposite subscribe. And here's my face and I'm just going to drag it into the position that I usually sort of put my face in so that's in a good position for my subscribe. The other elements that you have here is the ability to promote another channel or a link to an approved website. So for example, I have my website has been approved so I could create a link if I wish to to my website. And these are now in position so if I go and play my video in the last 20 seconds these are going to appear in the video and they're going to be clickable. So really that's all you need to do. Now once you've done one of these it is possible for you to import your end screens from another video. So you just click on import from video and then if you're prepared to replace these you can go and select another video to import these from. So that will help you save time creating these end screens. You can also use a template so if you want to click use template and there are a series of templates here that have preset layouts for these elements. So you can see here that here's a playlist or a video and a subscribe button. So if you wanted to again make them super quick to create you can just go and select a template and then just select the video for example that you want to link into this box. Of course the subscribe link is going to be consistent all the time. So, so much for brand new videos that you are now creating. Create your end screen, put it in your video, encode your video, put it all up on YouTube and then come into the end screen area and start putting the elements in the space that you've provided for them. But what happens if you've got existing videos up on YouTube? Let's look at that situation now. So what we're going to look at next is a video where I use this particular end screen. I bake this into my video. Let's go into end screens and annotations. And I'm told that end screen elements and annotations can't be used on the same video. So I have to unpublish annotations from this video if I want to add end screens. So I'm just going to click this for now. The good news is that they haven't gone because the bad news is that they're not going to work with this particular layout. This layout already has my face on it so if I try and go and put my face on it all I'm going to do is end up with two faces and it's going to look pretty stupid. If I go and try and add a playlist for example, let's just go and get a playlist, doesn't matter because going to look terrible anyway. You can see that my playlist buttons here are much bigger than the ones I was using. They can't be scaled down and they can't be placed really nicely to cover up this mess underneath. So essentially I am out of luck with these videos. Any of the videos that have this particular end screen on them that I created in the videos I won't be able to use the new end screen tools with because they just don't work for me. So I'm just going to get out of here and the beauty of this is thank goodness that even though I said to YouTube that it could unpublish those annotations in fact it hasn't done so. So I'm just going to leave this. I'm going back to this video and you can see that all my annotations are still in there. So the annotations that I've been using on these videos are still all there. They're all clickable annotations. There's nothing that's happened to these in the process, thankfully. So these are videos that have annotations for which the new end screen tool is not going to work for me. 
let's go and have a look at one that I can use them on. So here's a video that's been up on YouTube for quite a while. I'm going to end screens and annotations. I'm just going to show you what I was using. So let's go to annotations here. And at the very end of this video, this was what I taught you in another video to do. What we were doing is using annotations over an area of the video that didn't really matter as clickable links. So if we hadn't added pre-prepared end screen images that we could use, here was a method that we could achieve a sort of similar result with annotations. So these can be replaced with this new end screen tool. So what I'm going to do is go to end screens. I'm going to wind into the last 20 seconds of the video. So I want to be positioned here in the timeline. I'm going to add my elements here. So I'm going to add a playlist. This is a Photoshop video. So here is my Photoshop playlist. So I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to work on area of the video that's unlikely to have content that's going to be really important. And towards the end of my videos, I do tend to say things like thank you and goodbye. And so it doesn't really matter that these are going over the top of that. So I'm going to add a second video. And so I've got another Photoshop video that's pretty good here. I'm just going to add that. And now I can put it wherever I like. And one of the options is to put it here or I can go and put it over here. I'm thinking that I'm going to stick with this sort of arrangement because it's worked pretty well for me up until now. And then I'm going to add the only other thing that I like to add, which is my subscribe link. And I'm just going to put it down here. So once I've done that, I can click Save. The annotations will be gone because you can't have annotations and an end screen on the same video. So what I've effectively done is given up all the annotations that I put on those videos and I've replaced them with these new end screens. So the short answer to if I've got videos already up on YouTube, can I use this new end screen feature is if you don't have anything pre-prepared to put your end screen information on, yes, you probably can. And it looks pretty good. It certainly is working for me. However, if you had made some preparation, for example, use something like this, then you may want to reconsider whether you're going to use end screens or not. Because end screens over the top of this lot just adds up to one big mess. And so I'm going to opt not to do that. There's no way of editing my YouTube videos once they're up on YouTube to actually provide that sort of information. You can't drop an image into a YouTube video. We wish that we could, but we can't do it. So you're just going to need to critically evaluate for yourself whether it makes sense to use the new end screen features or not. But be aware that annotations aren't available on mobile devices, end screens are. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you now have the information you need to go ahead and work with end screens, this new feature in YouTube for your videos. If you did like this video, please click subscribe to subscribe and you'll be alerted when new videos are released.